Vasudev was the he was a great devotee of the Lord, and he had terrible infliction of leprosy upon his skin. You know what a terrible disease leprosy is? It was in its most advanced stages. It was at such an advanced stage that from from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, all his flesh was so diseased that it was rotting away. It was just rotten. It smelled like a corpse. It was emitting terrible odors. There was pus, there was blood, and there was lacks and lacks of worms eating his flesh away at every part of his body. And there was no cure. But he was such a devotee that when one of the worms would fall from his body, instead of stepping on it, thinking, ah, one less worm, he would carefully pick it up and place it back, thinking, oh, this body is not mine, this body is Krishna's, and he has given it as a home for my soul to live, but he's also given it as a home for this worm to live. So let him enjoy, as he's eating away his flesh. Let him enjoy. This was his compassion. He never complained. He never said, oh, why is this happening to me? I'm a devotee. Why is Krishna doing like this? You know how much he suffered? You cannot imagine. Not only, please understand, was there the infliction of terrible, terrible physical pain, but what about the pain of the ego? Such a person who has such an advanced stage of leprosy is rejected by family members, rejected by all friends, rejected by all society. Nobody wants anything to do with him. People just think he's a disturbance. They don't want to go near him. They don't want to smell him. They don't want to touch him. They don't want to see him. He was absolutely grotesque from the material point of view at every level. So he was completely abandoned by all his loved ones, all his friends, and all of the, in all the society. What type of pain would that cause your ego if you were in that situation? This was his dilemma. And obviously such a person, he has no money. We're so worried, ah, what if I do not have a lot of money tomorrow? What will I do? He had no money. He had no hope for ever having any money. He was completely outcasted by all loved ones, friends, and society, and he was suffering the most terrible, excruciating pain. But as far as he was concerned, everything was just fine. Because in that situation, he was always remembering Krishna. And when he heard that Lord Chaitanya was in Kurumakshetra, he was very much anxious to have darshan of the Lord. So he went to Kurumakshetra. But when he arrived at the Brahmin's house, Mahaprabhu had already left some time before. And then Vasudev, when he heard this, ah, it was like a deathly blow. He fell unconscious that he had missed the chance to have the darshan of the Supreme Lord and to serve his lotus feet. He was never in pain or anxiety. He was never the slightest bit disturbed by his physical pains, by his social outcast condition. He was never disturbed in the slightest by any of these things. But he was terribly disturbed when he missed the opportunity to serve the Lord. What was his priority in life? And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, knowing such devotion of such a devotee who actually fell unconscious, so disturbed and pained his heart was that he missed the chance to offer this service. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back to that place. And what did he do when he came back? Mahaprabhu embraced Vasudev. And when he embraced him, he cured the whole disease. He became beautiful. His body had a golden effulgence. All the disease was absolutely removed. He had a young, strong, healthy, handsome, effulgent body. Now, let me ask you, doctors, that if you had a patient who was so miraculously cured, what would be his response? What do you say? Would he be happy? Would he be grateful? Vasudev was not. Vasudev was terribly disturbed that he was cured. There was no anxiety in his heart when he was suffering the disease. And there was no anxiety or disturbance in his heart when he was just suffering unbearable pain and disgrace. But when he was cured, there was great anxiety in his heart. Why? 
because he was thinking that in that situation I was in, I was so humble. There was nothing for me to be proud of, and therefore it was very natural for me to always be calling out in desperation the holy name. But now I've achieved special mercy from the Lord. Everyone who sees me is going to know that the Lord had performed a miracle just for me. Now I have a handsome body, a beautiful body, an effulgent demigod-like body. Now what will keep me from being proud? And as soon as pride enters my heart, any of my service, any of my chanting of the holy names, it has no meaning to you, my Lord. My life is to please you. This is a great obstacle to my pleasing you. Therefore, now I am afraid. Now I am disturbed. Please tell me, my Lord, how can I be in this situation and free from pride? And Mahaprabhu told him, always chant the holy names, associate with devotees. Whoever you meet, you instruct them in the science of Krishna. If you just follow this instruction on my order, you will never become proud. Your service desire will never become less. And then Mahaprabhu left. So this is a beautiful story, which shows the priority and the determination of a true devotee of the Lord. Only one thing in his life is disturbing, not having that humble service attitude. To lose that, to lose the opportunity to serve the Lord and to please the Lord is the only anxiety in the heart of a devotee. Whatever the physical, mental, or material conditions of life a devotee takes every situation as an opportunity to further his service. So in this sense, Vasudev taught us <clears throat> that the most dangerous times in life is when everything appears very nice, very normal, because then we're off guard. And when we're off guard, lust, anger, envy, pride, greed, they so easily come into our life. Because if we're not calling out for Krishna, these things must come into our life. There's Krishna and there's Maya. If you're not surrendering to Krishna, Maya is going to take over. Any moment you're not calling out for Krishna, Maya is there. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on thesacredconnect.com.